everyone like to call this meeting to order? Please no. stand and pledge allegiance to the flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag. The United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Right. 
So, so and it really involved changing a few words. In, in, you know, you know, I'm holding this up as saying, after a hundred a hundred page document, they came back with you guys to ha have a good good plan to put together. Um, it's been half a decade, six years, seven years. It's gone through two planners. It's gone through two uh, supervisors. It's gone through two planning board chairmen. It's gone through probably five different planning board members, two chairmen of the, the comprehensive planning committee. It, it, it looked a little rag tag, and maybe it was. In the end, though, it came out with a document that the county, the professional planners, held up and said, this is a pretty good plan, except for these two items that we changed some words on. Um, I'm looking forward to moving forward. Uh, the, the planning board in this town needs to update zoning maps, zones period, the zoning maps period, and the land use ordinance. We can't do it unless the comprehensive plan is, is finalized. You really got to put that before you do the other plans. So we're anxious to get moving on this and start the new year in a new direction. Um, I had a I had a discussion the other day with, with a member that you know they they talked about the contentiousness contentiousness in the town. In in the the. the I don't see that as, as a lifetime member of this town. I don't see the contentiousness. There, there are some differences in, in how we view this document and how we should proceed. And it, 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 it was a little ragtag in, in its development. But in the end, it was a good document. And we proved that by the county 239. And if you want to ask our, our, our town legal advisor and our town uh, planner right here, because nobody in this room has gone through any, any comprehensive plan to me either. Has anybody in here done a comprehensive plan before? Okay, we, we've got two people. We've got four people in this room. So, so it's, it's a new process to most all of us. But if you want to ask these people that were involved in this, did it happen properly? Is it a good plan? I think you're going to get a good opinion on it. And I would ask them maybe to say a few words. We would like to move forward as a planning board. Um, I think it builds. If you're not happy with the process, the way it came out, okay. The process itself was ragtag, like I said. But in the end, we, we got a good document, and we proved it. Um, let's move forward at this point and not bring this back to light again. Let's move forward. The, the, the land use ordinance in, in, the, in, the, in the zoning maps are, are wonderful places to start with more opinions and work together again. But if we drag this thing back next year and start over again, um, it's, it's only going to build the differences that, that already some people think exist. It's going to make them, it's going to exacerbate them. We need to start with this plan and move forward. So I, I appreciate it. We can move this thing forward. Thank you. Can I go ahead and read the planning board? minor modification response to 239 sure. because I think some people might have a question in their mind about how the wording is. You know, be helpful for clarity. Is that all right with you? That time you do a it's, the, it's your response to the 239 report. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is yeah. that okay if I yeah. read that out loud? In response to the 239 review from the county, minor modifications are recommended. Chapter 4 future land use sections on residential mixed use, moderate density areas. After much discussion about this topic, the planning board determined that the county recommend language, recommended language altered be adopted as proposed. The planning board considers every application with regards to traffic impacts and density issues. There was a transportation study included by Cornell Design Connect and Tompkins County Transportation Council staff that projects traffic impacts of the by projected development. That's, then we've got another planning board recommendation to the town board. Include in the resolution adopting the plan a statement that these impacts will be analyzed in detail before any zoning amendments to the 
to implement the plan are adopted. Also, Chapter 3, Sections on Infrastructure and Housing and Neighborhoods. The discussion continues about the Tompkins County Comprehensive Plan. And Guy Crow pointed out the 2017 proposed Lansing Comprehensive Plan update does in fact comply with the Tompkins County Comprehensive Plan. They next reviewed the language and offered the following amendment to change the word expand in regards to elect, uh, natural gas to enhance as recommended, but exclude the not necessarily expand. The word changed to enhance, this is a little modify recommendation 1-1A to indicate the town will work with NYSIG to enhance the electrical and natural gas distribution systems to increase capacities while encouraging the transition to the alternative forms of energy. And to be add and discuss with after NYSIG and change to all uses in the town of Lansing. B, modify a recommendation HN3B to indicate that the town will work with NYSIG and discuss with the town of Dryden and Tompkins County on the means of enhancing capacity of natural gas to service residential or industrial or commercial uses in the town of Lansing. Just as a matter of clarity, so they know what we're talking about. Okay? I was wondering, Guy, you can explain how legally binding this comprehensive plan is, or how it's not legally binding. Well, there's a lot of answers to that question. The comprehensive plan is aspirational, it's not law. It guides the implementation of policy and law, but it doesn't do so in a straitjacket. It is perfectly permissible, and it happens every single day that a change or an amendment is done in relation to some piece of land that is not consistent with the community's comprehensive plan. Perfectly acceptable because things change. Um, <clears throat> a comprehensive plan, as it is legally defined, is not contained within any single one document. It is a body of documents and policies. Your personnel policy, for example, is part of the town's comprehensive plan. Some of your resolutions, your parks and recreation rules, your water rules, all of those things together point out what is a comprehensive plan. This is just one document. There are dozens of documents that form a comprehensive plan. Anything that would be done, let's say, after this is amended, after this, if, let's say, hypothetically, it's adopted, <clears throat> and then you start looking at zoning or what other changes you might want to make consistent with this, whether it's an overlay district for flood zones or steep slopes or UNAs or whatever it is. Um, <clears throat> that process would become part of your comprehensive plan, and if it was material and concrete, I would encourage you to amend this document. Um, <clears throat> but a comprehensive plan is not binding in the sense that I've <coughs> often heard the word used. It is a guidepost. It's something that's supposed to help you. It's supposed to get you going in a direction and teach you what to look for, what the community's goals are, what the community's goals are a constantly evolving thing. Um, a comprehensive plan that says no development at the intersection of roads A and B isn't going to hold up if roads A and B are 281 and State Route 81. Um, if you say no development there, then you've got to account for the fact that a major highway went through, that will cause a change. That will reduce the likelihood of any residential use in that location. So is it is it is it a legal document? Yes. Um, does it need to be, uh, you know, do you have to have a, if, if you get a recommendation from your planning board, are you required by law to have a public hearing within 90 days? Yes. Um, once you adopt it, are you supposed to refer to it when you do your subdivision, and re your subdivision reviews and your local laws and your policies, whether it's conservation related or lakefront related, yes. <clears throat> Is it set in stone? No, it's supposed to evolve. So, can I ask a uh, clarifying question on that? So, if something is in the comprehensive plan as a proposed use, say commercial mixed use down 34B to the schools, okay. which is in the current map, correct? There's a strip that goes all the way to the school. Okay. So if that is in the map, any proposed zoning change in that area would 
have to comply with the comprehensive <coughs> plan proposed future uses? No. Okay. So the comprehensive plan is your starting point. It's not, it's not your destination. However, if proposed commercial mixed use business in that whole strip, it implies that the town is interested in developing that for those uses it, because it, it's the stated intent of the town. If you're asking me a question, I'll give you an example. Yes. You go on Trip Hammer Road, uh, <coughs> Rational Hills, and you go from Prueville to Franklin Drive. That may be a commercial area. You see this commercial area there already. There's a painted company across the road. It would stop there on Franklin, from Franklin to Prueville. That would be a different zone than from Franklin down to Asbury, down to wherever. That would be a different zone. On the other side of that, you have to the landscape. That might be zoned differently. We have a concern now where you have uh, and now it's called Cuba Orchard, which is the land by Michael Lincoln's. Now that is zoned a certain area for that type of development. The concern was on the other side, will that also be that, that, take that same zone so we would have that much density over there? The proposal is no. The proposal is, is going to be something else, those two triangles that were concerned. Personal opinion, and I was going to leave them alone because we get feedback. Keep asking for feedback, 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 feedback. Having said that, the planning board came up with this compromise. And the whole thing is, is that it's a compromise where we're going with this, but it's not written in stone. These things may change. They may change, and I'm not saying overnight, but look what they've done in the last few years if you get, for instance, sewer up to that Cuba orchard area. How would that change that density? Which is what people you want density. Right now, you guys have put up a house on a two acre lot. You don't have water or sewer. The city is doing 24 units on the same footprint as called Bill Solar's as Bill Circle was there. That would have 48 acres. So because you have water and sewer, they, they, they go up three. It's a prime example how they don't want to sprawl. Okay, here is it in this area. So there's different examples how these things change as they evolve. Now, some would say it's spot zoning, we need to do special favors for people, but is it really spot zoning or are you recognizing the evolution of certain areas? Another example of that would be the garage down across from the schools and the, and the church. It's been a garage for forever, correct? It was commercial. It was commercial, yes. it's yeah. been a garage forever, and there have been a, there's been a petition to continue making a commercial because he can't sell that place because nobody's going to build a house there. Right. Um, and it is part of a semi, I mean, a commercial feel with the church and the school and buses and the traffic. So I might feel that that is an appropriate continued use for that. Somebody, somebody else might think of that as spot zoning because it's a small spot. Correct? Yes, and the fact is that that was zoned lake at one time because of the way that you would mitigate all the drainage at one time. Now that's changed. And we've seen that through different laws where all of a sudden you had a huge area that was by the lake, away from the lake, had to be zoned as lake. Therefore, you would protect the lake. Well, things have changed nowadays where you don't have the raw sewage, you don't have other runoff mm -hmm. like that, you have storm water, you have other things to do that. Another example of what's in this um, comprehensive plan is the concern of the, we call it the Bell Station land, and how that, Mike, you want to perhaps give us a better definition of how that's evolving as a proposal? Well, as um, the planning board had the public hearing, took a lot of the information that was developed over those several weeks and actually updated a lot of the language. So what we had done, and I know Tom Butler was on the original comprehensive plan committee, was very important put back some additional language on Bell Station. Um, as part of the review of the 239 application process. Um, again, the planning board looked at it from the perspective that it's currently zoned lakefront on one side and agriculture on the upper side. You know, again, that's the way they looked at the zoning ordinance back in 2003. That was the last time it was done. After we get the comprehensive plan adopted, then we can discuss what it really should become, whether it should be 
um, you know, whatever you just purchase. So <coughs> what we did, and maybe just give me a second to interject. Do you want to read the, hmm? the paragraph? Um, well, if you want to read it, we, we basically added some language. So I, I put a little packet together for the town board members tonight, which has three pieces in it. One is the information that was a result of the public hearing that the planning board had. And it has the new language for the Bell Station. And it added some additional information about the acreage, about the interest in having a, a public park. I had a reference in there about the town board resolution that adopted that should the EC want to, to acquire it to create a, a park, that the town board had actually adopted a resolution in support of that, contingent on them doing a pilot agreement for the taxes that would have been developed on that parcel. That was what the resolution said back at that time. So try to make that abundantly clear that the town had at that time said this is what we want to do. So the, uh, the 239 had initially also discussed that they had updated their UNAs. So UNAs, unique, unique natural areas, excuse me, acronyms. We always use acronyms. But the county, they had given me the preliminary map in 2015 of what was adopted, they then added this one after they gave me the map, which they told me was the final version. So in, in our packet tonight, I've given you three packets. One is the comprehensive plan that the um, planning board members had made very specific recommendations and changes. The one thing that, that was referenced that uh, Ed had talked about were the triangles on North Trip Hammer to make this a, um, a reverse frontal uh, development zone of mixed uses. So it could be a residential, you could have a, maybe an office in it, um, a, a chiropractor or a lawyer who may want to live upstairs. Can, can, can I embellish that a little bit? Because uh, Ed, Ed talked about the, the, the growing factor of our town and, and it might seem like spot selling, but, but the, these areas like down 34 or down, down Trip Emerald Road aren't great for housing anymore. So, what we, what we talked about with commercial was uh, create a new commercial zone that would be low impact commercial. A doctor's office, a dentist's office. Something that would fit with the neighborhood. You know, they're closed on the weekends. I'd love to have one of those for a neighborhood. You know, it, uh, so, so we have to work on how we're going to blend, how you're going to blend these uses with, with existing neighborhoods and, and, and still develop these road frontages because there, there really aren't, if, if it's zoned for uh, R1 or R2 residential use, they're not going to build there. He's not, it's, it's, it, he's not going to sell the land for that. It's, it's right. not usable for that. And the other thing the planning board recognized is you'd have a driveway every 150 feet yeah. all along that whole area. And all of a sudden, now you've got 15 different driveways. And their concept was, let's have a driveway in the back that everyone would share. So you'd have reverse frontage is the concept that they had talked about. And that was part of our form-based code that we had discussed as part of the comprehensive plan committee three years ago. So this is a reference to the triangle piece that we're talking yep. about. Low impact. Yep. Uh, Low it's impact. A, it's a delineation category for us, correct? Well, at the time, our thought. The, the, so yes. the, it's a concept at this point. So the next step after the comprehensive plan is, is adopted, then we look at the land use ordinance and it should become a, a zoning code. It should be a town uh, law, local law. At that point, then we describe exactly what would be there, how it would be, and again, go through a public process, get a lot of input, get everybody's intake, and then the town board makes a decision as to what it would ultimately become. Okay, let's extrapolate from that type of descriptor, and I just want to separate out the types of commercial we're talking about. Mm -hmm. The commercial that is on the proposed map from Rooms Harbor down to the schools is a regular mixed it's currently, yes. right now, it's mixed use. All the way to the school. This is, or is this an extension? Well, I, I think it could, I think, you know, when we get around it, if you just leave it, maybe change it to mixed use, I think that could be a low impact also. It's, again, it's just not great for housing. Uh, no, I agree with you. I mean, I just moved off of Main Street because yeah, right. I couldn't sleep yeah. because there's so much traffic. However, I'm looking at it just from the town concept of these are main thoroughfares. And yes, they're not great for houses, and they're close to the road. I get that. But if we replace them with businesses that now have more traffic, we're going to slow down those thoroughfares even more, and it will become more dangerous because of the ins and outs, assuming they're using the same property. So it doesn't make sense. I mean, I... 
there is some under... <laughs> Let me finish what I'm saying, okay. okay? So if you see what's going on up here, extending down, how do we keep from becoming a strip like Elmira? Yeah. Well, I mean, I... this is a big concern. It's traffic, dangerous, it's not pretty. Well, I think there's you know, a lot. There's a lot to of think ahead right there. and have a vision, and that's what proposed zoning as a uh, comp plan is about: is thinking ahead to something better than has been done before, right? Well, I think that, absolutely. I think that the as this evolves, as it'll take time, and these discussions will be posted for the planning board. People are allowed to come and listen to these discussions. Nothing has changed in the zoning yet. If this thing passes. Nothing changes. The next discussions over time will be where you want to go with this. And we all know Route 13 at one time was a two-lane highway. Does that mean it's going to be a Route 13? No. But maybe there's turning lanes there as this evolves from the DOT. Put those in as it evolves. Like, well, right. Sorry. Sorry. I'm like where the old McDonald's is, that's three lanes now up there where it used to be two. These things evolve. but. I hear on one hand, we don't want sprawl, we want density. Well, with density comes bodies. And yes, 10 minutes difference here in the morning and you're backed up past Drake Road trying to get up by Rose Harbor as opposed to at 8 o'clock, as if we're 7.30, I understand all those things. Could there be more train lanes in there? And these are things that you discuss with the DOT as we're proposing a traffic study done for all the different development that might happen here. And this is where you get those three lanes, and this is where you get three lanes as it evolves. But I can't stress enough that this is just the first step. Nothing, when this passes at some point, nothing changes overnight. We still have this, I would hope all of you come and bring your neighbors and listen to these people as they weave through this. And even then, it's a proposal. Even then, it gets another, it gets another public hearing. Even then, it goes to the, to the town board with their recommendations like we're doing now with this. Even then, you get another public hearing. So it's evolving as we go. And this is a great opportunity now, since we have people stimulated here, and this is a teachable moment for me, get your input as fast as you can, because that is easier for them to incorporate it, as opposed to everybody piling on at the end saying, we didn't have a chance. Well, you know, you do have a chance. On the other hand, I think as we grow together, we now can have people have input, or you can reach out to Tom Ellis or any of the planning board members or any of ours, and I'll say it again, 592-6542, call me, just like I did at the first informational session, call me. There have been some that have done that, like with the Triangle, thank you, with the Hillcrest Concerns we're trying to do, thank you. But once again, this is the first step of a very long process. And I'm glad you all showed up tonight because, once again, a teachable moment to communicate. We have a lot of great minds here, a lot of great work has been done, I'm not disputing that. But I think the collective conversation, and by collective conversation I mean a stimulating back and forth with people in a group, I think the proposal that we have on our plate is a possible one to go into the new year, not make a huge extension of the process, but to go out to areas of the town and say these are some major changes in proposals. Give us, you know, let's talk about it. Like we are doing here on the board. We can still talk about it if, even if it's a dust. That's not, nothing's going to change. If you, this is, no, this is a concrete vision for the town. And there's a lot of <coughs> uncomfortableness about how controlled the conversation is. Truthful. Well, let's think about this. We went six years with this. There's been plenty of input. There's been, with all due respect, people. Can you please use your mic? <laughs> with all due respect, people have had six years to come forth and put input into this. A lot of us, including me, I was told when we turned this process over to the planning board out of respect because you have huge amounts of experience. I was told that we were turning it over to you, 
then it would come back to the town board to review further. And we would have more conversations with people and have our own hearing after we have gone through those processes. So I feel like the time frame is overly compressed. Yes, you had it a long time. It came to you needing a lot of work. That's not the town board's fault. And I feel like some of you have attended the planning board meetings, but I was told, you know, why weigh in more until we get the final result? That's what I was told. So I backed off. And I'm begging for myself and for the town some respect to be able to process it, talk about it, do a little more public connection, not conflict, connection. And I believe that in a few more months, whether it's two months or three months, I don't want this to go any farther than that. I'll say straight out, I do, I do not feel this should go into the summer. But I do think we should give it its due time. Well, what's your, what's your definition of due time? I mean, guy, how many meetings have we had so far on this? And how many public hearings have we had on this? And once again, not to minimize the, the impact. Excuse this me, thing, Ed, would you please use your microphone? I'm asking Guy how many meetings we've had and how many public hearings we've had. And once again, this thing can be changed. It's, we're starting, and once again, we're continuing this process of conversation. And it's a, a continuation here. When the comprehensive plan gets adopted, that does not finalize anything. It is just one more step as the process moves forward. You still have plenty of time, opportunity to have input for the zoning changes if there are any. There may be zero on that. There might be. We might change it, keep it the way it is. Uh, people are shocked when I say that. I mean, that's the way it is. The way I see it is at some point we need to move forward with this. How many? So I ask guy again, how many of these have we been and how many public hearings? We know how many. And I would like them to know because you may know, but, but perhaps the audience doesn't know. Well, if you, if you include the ag plan, there's been, I think, four public hearings so far, and the town boards will be number five. If you include the Ag Plan, I think there's been four public information sessions. If you include where this all started with the, the professional planners um, and the town center thing, there was some work there. But since, I think the count since October 2014 is over 50 public meetings. And it's closer to 65, but I haven't done an exact count. But when you count all the planning board meetings, which you had, but I believe you admitted you did not post what the subject of each meeting was. People are busy. They're not going to come to every meeting. If there was, if it was posted about what the subject was, maybe they would. But 50 public meetings does not mean that people had time or access to do that. We have a plan that is in its almost final stages. Zero question and answer periods. None with the community. There's been a lot of meetings, no one's denying that fact, but there's been very little back and forth with the community. I just think if it's not a big deal, why are you pushing so hard to get it done this month? If it's not a big deal, let's do one public informational meeting, a working meeting, we'll talk, we'll let people ask questions, we'll answer their questions. North Lansing, Lansingville, south of town, Bring it out to people. Once the planning board gives us to us, we have 90 days. We can have a public hearing, and we can continue to have a working meeting after that. It's not just one public hearing. No, you're required to have a public hearing within 90 days. You are not required to have only one public hearing, and you are not required to make a decision within 90 days. Is there a time period once those 90 days are where let's say we have our public hearing <coughs> in December. If we don't approve it, we just have the public hearing in December. Is there a time period after that before we have to 
send it back to the planning board or we have to start? Do we lose any ground if I say it's four or five more months after that? No. Well, in terms of, of your ability to approve it, no. You, you don't have an outside timetable except, for lack of a better term, common sense. If you get too far removed in time from the date of the referral and the document goes through a lot of major changes, you'll probably have to have another public hearing. Um, but if you're going to have more than one anyway, what does it matter? What I'm looking at is that it has to be connected in time to the initial public hearing. So if you have your first public hearing within your 90 days, and then you have a second one and some information sessions, and it's all part of a single process, and it culminates in, a, in an approval of, let's say, less than six months or less than 12 months, depending upon what the issues are, it's sort of like a moratorium. You're not going to run into an approval timeline, but by the time you make those changes, you will be full circle back to where you are now. So let me share my concerns I have, which is the planning board and the town board are working well together. Yes, I you would, say, you would say so, Tom. I mean, we're working well together. We've done a lot of great stuff these last couple of years. Um, my concern is to at least get the public hearing out of the way. If this thing gets pushed into January and then it gets passed, I think that would be hypocritical. What I mean is that what I would be in favor of is simply having a public hearing in December and then do a series of informational. My concern though is that do we jeopardize this thing if we if it takes to May? What will jeopardize it? I'm, I'm simply asking this from a legal standpoint, from what they said. The road to hell is made with good intentions. Okay. okay. So having said that, I don't mind six years, seven years, ten years, whatever. Um, to do this, if people are comfortable to a certain extent, the bottom line is we're not going to all agree with everything. But on the other hand, I don't want people to think they got ramrodded, but at some point, where is your comfort zone on this? And if we have enough informational sessions, I know your hands are up, but this is not about comment. This is only about the, okay? This, there, there's no, there's no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to debate tonight. I'm simply saying we're trying to get some consensus here to where our comfort level is so we also meet the legal requirements so that we don't jeopardize this. So if we do the public hearing in December without the approval. Sooner the better, but you have 90 days. Right, for what just, is, just for the public, but not, but not for the approval, just for the public hearing. Yes, and then if we, what the deadline was. And then if we do a series, because like I said, if we're going to do this in, in January, we might as well go to March or April, make sure everybody is comfortable with this. Because I think for a lot of people, they really get an idea what zoning's about. I mean, for most people, they don't know. So is that comfortable with the rest of the board if we do that? I'm, I'm much more comfortable with your, with the idea that we invite more people to listen to what is legally binding, what is not, how this doesn't change the, necessarily change the zoning. I think that there's a miscomprehension out there that as soon as this is passed, that everything changes, and that isn't true. Well, and I'd like to know also how difficult you made the comment and how that we could change it. Are you talking about the comprehensive plan, or are you just talking about? You can go back and change it. And how difficult is it to change? Well, I don't know. That's up to you. <coughs> if the plan, if the town board does it itself, it requires one public hearing. If we make changes to it. Yeah. If, 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 let's say it's adopted and then you want to later amend it, the town board would have to have a public hearing for that amendment. It's been done. Not in our time, it's been done. I think it's good it's, it. it's, it's done all the time. So this thing isn't set in stone? No. No. Well, that's what I'm trying to get across. But yeah. on the other hand, I sense the angst in the room, which is, okay, so that if we have to do small steps at a time, we have to do small steps at a time. And then from there, we'll, we'll see what the next step is. Could we agree to a reasonable time other than December 20th for a public hearing? Say, the first Wednesday in February? The, once again, the public hearing, correct me if I'm wrong, you got 90 days that's to Wednesday. That's when, good that. when they presented it to us, okay? When the, when the town board <laughs> presented this to us, that's when the clock started ticking. That's what it just said. Planning board. Yeah, 
So you're talking February at the latest. Once again, if you have your public hearing in December, do not approve anything, just leave it there. You've taken that burden oh, of the night. We, we can do that. We can certainly have the public without the approval, and, approval and, then and then that can go on. That's what my question was. Okay. How long can that right. go on before we jeopardize this? I would say get it done within six months, but it depends on the process. Um, but if, if you finish your public hearing and the net result is you want to schedule another public hearing, then you do that. So that would. There's lots of options. There's pros and cons. You can, we can have the public hearing on the 20th. But if we know we're going to continue on with the discussion, why don't we wait till we have some consensus on some of the stuff that we're talking about, which is whether that commercial district should go all the way down to the school or if it should stop at Portland Point Road. You know? If you don't, I mean, and I understand that. I, once again, I'm very flexible. <coughs> The thing is that if you don't do the nine days, it goes back to the planning board. He said we have oh, until February what? 11th. 11th. Okay. So you have one more meeting, and now you're into January, which is we have our informational meeting also that okay. same day. My concern is I'd rather get the angst of having a public hearing out of the way. When people get to with no approval. communicate. With no with approval. Us. With no approval. And then if you have informational meetings after that, at the consensus of the board, when they're comfortable, then we can move forward to have another meeting for the approval. Can anyone speak from the floor? No. no. This, is, this is a special town board meeting. There's privilege to the floor by the public. No, it wasn't the agenda. Uh -huh. It's on back, back table. It actually came in late. There was no meeting. There was an announcement when we first started. Having said all that, is that a comfort zone of the board? So I guess if I a public hearing where people can have a dialogue, or giving an informational meeting like the one in August. So let me so let me clarify. Okay, first of all, the one in in August was the planning. Well, I didn't feel comfortable answering their questions and their proposals back then. Okay, getting back to this one, you have two different concepts here. One is you have the public hearing, which has to be done. Okay, doesn't have to have a pool. Right? Doesn't have to have approval. <clears throat> Where we can hear from everybody who wants to submit. Okay, doesn't have to have an approval. Then from there, we can have a series of questions, answers, not debates, not like why are we doing this, but what are your concerns? In other words, specifically, I'm uncomfortable with this, or what? Can we do this instead? Or what about this? I want to have constructive dialogue as far as that goes. I think that will lower the angst we have here by saying, okay, everything may not be included, but at least you'll have a chance to be heard. And then it will be the consensus of the town board's version as we move forward when the comfort zone is there, and it may be 4-1, maybe 3-2, maybe whatever. But at some point, we have to make a decision where we're comfortable moving forward on this. So once again, Nothing will be approved on December 20th. But we have to within those 90 days. Otherwise, we throw it back to the planning board and we start the process again. Uh, I think we can have a public hearing. And then we've got enough time within six months, as I understand. Or so. It's sooner it's the better. Not, but yeah. It's not written in stone. And then what does that do once, say, the changes are more substantial than what's there? Does that have to go back to the county? No. If there are some material changes, it probably would go to the county, yes. So now you're looking at another 239 review, which would take another month. So if we're having, say, say we have the public hearing, and we go out and have some working meetings that allow back and forth dialogue, uh, which, you know, I'm all for. <laughs> um, say we do that. We can post our ideas for changes as we go. We can post the thoughts of what we're talking about. We don't have to <coughs> say we're talking about this, you know, this is up in the air. We're hearing people. Okay. I mean, once again, all that does is move to the next level, which is now we start working on the proposed zoning changes of the 
Once you our, can start that in January. You can start talking about proposed zoning changes before the adoption of the comp plan, correct? So, I mean, the dialogue can happen. So, we don't have to get behind. Yeah, uh, okay. what's the point if we don't know the direction? Right, right. I mean, it's, yeah, you guys do it in the wrong order if you want to. Okay, okay. so I, can we have I, some, I, some I, representation I, from the planning board with us at these meetings so they can help us? <laughs> Yeah, if you have other legal questions, because as I told you, this was a pop-up oh, meeting. Yes. Yes. I have to be in Enfield, yeah. and they were graceful enough to tell me, yeah, come at 745. So uh, there are other legal questions, because my answer is, is you've got, you've got, a, according to every planner that's been involved in your planning board, this is a good plan. According to Comprehend the county, it's a good plan. No, I've worked on these in a lot of towns. It's a good plan. It's not going to make everyone happy. It never will. Will be amended. I was going to try to discuss it as a floating zone, but now is not the time. I would have your public hearing and get the technical aspect out of the way as quickly as possible. Don't risk the snowstorm of the century and missing the 90 days. It's happened. If you had been sitting in there and had your meeting scheduled for March of 93, you wouldn't have had a meeting. Um, but you don't have to have just one public hearing. You can do whatever it is that you want to do once you have that first public hearing. You can schedule more public hearings, you can schedule information sessions, you can bring in experts from near and far, you can do anything you want. But I would, I would strongly encourage you to get the nuts and bolts, the procedures, the things that can really trip you up out of the way. Because <laughs> we already had this 90 day rule, we were up once before, and everyone said, well, we'll get through it. That was a year ago. So if you want to try to get it done within a year, just get that first public hearing out of the way. It doesn't have to be the only one, but get it done. That would be my advice. That's legal advice, it's not binding, it's not necessarily really practical, but that's my advice. I would like to wrap this up. I think we have a good plan here. If this comfort zone here moving forward. Would you like to restate the plan? <laughs> I can't do the legalese, uh, but I think what I would propose is that we have a public hearing on December 20th to fulfill the obligation on the 90 days. Then from there, without approval, then from there we can have a series of informational meetings. Maybe it's another Wednesday where people meet here. We can rotate. We're trying to get different places. Uh, Joe and I are working on that. That's one of Joe's ideas, which is fine to move it around. We've done that before in the past with Steve Farkas. He used to have meetings at Lansingville sometimes. Caroline does this now, this is not, uh, I, as far as I'm concerned, I'll have the accounting do that, actually rotate, bring the government to the people uh, once a month. But having said that, get back to this, without the approval, get this re requirement behind us so we don't take too many, we don't take steps backwards, and then do the informational meetings where they say, okay, here's what the proposals are, here are the guidelines that are proposed, how do you feel comfortable about this? Now, you may have six people in a room with six different ideas, and you may not, but at least you'll have a chance to be heard as far as maybe there's a new idea that will come out. So as we continue to move down, is that a good enough summary? I like that summary. I thought you would. So having said that, uh, <laughs> having said that, I think we need to wrap this up tonight. Um, I don't think anybody's been slighted. I hope they haven't been. Because if anyone thinks I haven't been able to compromise, I think tonight's a pretty good indication I am. Um, I know my, my, some of my colleagues might be upset at me for moving this direction, but if you are going to get this town back in the middle again, one of the ways is to at least feel that you've been hurt. And having said that, we'll find out how long it will take. And at some point, we're going to have to say, you know what? We've massaged this enough. We need to make a decision. Where can we feel a general comfort zone where there's still no flexibility? <coughs> But we have to have a little bit of guide where we want to do these things. Fair enough? Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. All right. So having said that, um, if we have a consensus here, what we do, um, would you like to close the meeting? I would say we close the meeting. I'll second. All in favor? All right. Okay. We're done. Thank you.